The salty spray stung Henry's eyes as he battled the wheel of his little sailboat. San Francisco Bay, usually his playground, had turned into a raging monster, the afternoon sun disappearing behind a wall of angry clouds. He'd ventured too far out, lured by the promise of a clear horizon, and now the wind howled a fierce warning. Hours later, as darkness descended and hope dwindled, a glimmer of light pierced the churning water. A British brig, a majestic silhouette against the storm, appeared like a divine savior. Relief washed over Henry as he was hauled aboard, his heart brimming with gratitude. The voyage to London was long and rough, his days filled with sailors' duties in exchange for passage. He arrived in the bustling city a far cry from his usual self, his clothes worn and threadbare, his pockets singing a sad song of emptiness. Hunger gnawed at his stomach as he wandered down a dusty street. A discarded piece of pie lay on the sidewalk, a silent taunt against his empty belly. But pride roared with desperation. Just as he was about to snatch it, a voice like polished silver cut through the city noise. Excuse me, young man. Henry turned to find himself staring up at a tall, elegantly dressed man holding the door to a grand house open. Hesitantly, he stepped inside, feeling like a sparrow in a peacock's nest. Two elderly gentlemen sat across a mahogany table, a silver tea set gleaming between them. Their breakfast, a feast for the eyes, only deepened Henry's hunger pangs. As if sensing his struggle, the gentleman who spoke held out a hand. Come in, come in. Please, have a seat. Henry mumbled a hesitant thank you, feeling like an intruder in this world of wealth. The brothers, for they were brothers, introduced themselves as Alexander and Abel. Their conversation was polite, their eyes sharp and assessing. Then, Alexander reached for a thick envelope and placed it in Henry's hand. Here, he said, a small token for your journey. Confused but grateful, Henry thanked them and left. Outside, the envelope felt like a small flicker of hope in the dimming light. He tore it open, his breath catching in his throat. Inside, instead of a few coins, lay a single banknote, crisp, pristine, and absolutely unbelievable, a million pounds. Panic surged through him. Surely, this was a mistake. He couldn't spend it, couldn't even dream of acquiring such a fortune. His stomach rumbling, he made his way to a small cafe. The owner, a burly man with a gruff voice, looked up from wiping down a table. What can I get for you, sir? He asked, his tone flat. Henry, mustering his courage, stammered, anything, please. And could you change this? He held out the million pound note, his hand trembling slightly. The owner's eyes widened. He snatched the note and examined it with a mixture of awe and disbelief. A strange silence descended upon the cafe. Then, the owner's face crumpled in frustration. This, he sputtered, this ain't no regular bill, sir. This is a million pounds. His dreams of a hot meal vanished. Henry explained his situation, 
about the strange encounter with the brothers, about the confusion surrounding the note. The owner, though sympathetic, couldn't change it. But he offered something unexpected. Come back anytime, sir, he said, a grin spreading across his face. You look like a gentleman in disguise, playing a fun little trick. You can have all the food you want on the house. Henry, stunned but strangely relieved, mumbled his thanks and left. The city seemed different now, filled with curiosity and suspicion. Newspapers dubbed him the millionaire with the useless note. He became a celebrity of sorts, his every move scrutinized. Days blurred into weeks. He moved from his dingy room to a luxurious hotel, his pockets lined with credit, all thanks to the unchangeable note. He indulged in the finer things, tailor-made suits, extravagant meals, and the thrill of a temporary high life. All the while, a gnawing worry stayed hidden beneath the surface, the day he'd face the brothers again. One evening, at a glittering dinner party hosted by the American ambassador, Henry came face to face with his past. Lloyd Hastings, a former colleague from San Francisco, approached him, eyes wide with disbelief. Henry Adams? Is that really you? Their reunion turned into a torrent of memories. Lloyd, it turned out, had come to London to sell shares in a Californian gold mine, only to face constant rejection. Desperation etched itself on his face. As the night wore on, a plan hatched in Henry's mind. He would use his newfound fame, fueled by the 